come to another session. And this one will be moderated by the Vice Chancellor of UMAT. He's a teacher, speaks well, and he believes in this vision. He's done a lot. I have the pleasure, before I bring his panelists, to invite him to take the podium. And <laughs> microphones, please. Okay. Those of you who are passing left side, be careful. But I think you're better off passing here. But if you are careful, don't take the first step. Just move to the second one. Professor, you are welcome. So you are the moderator for this session. And this session, four other personalities will be joining from various fields. And I don't know who to start with, but I'll start with Dr. Henry Kokofu, CEO of the EPA. The man is very well versed, and like the Nigerians will say, he's very lettered. He's an environmentalist, a politician, a lawyer. <laughs> he holds a lot of degrees. And he's a member, because of his strategic position, he's a member of many boards. Maritime Authority, Lands Commission, Petroleum Commission, Public Investment Program and Working Committee, Public-Private Partnerships Committee. Wow. Please give him a clap before I continue. <laughs> I see that he likes the politics because he has put a there that he's a former member of parliament and he's a politician. You are welcome. You can find his um, brief profile on page 25. Eh? Oh, OK. You know, I was looking for your your uniform. I thought that the picture had your uniform. OK, so it's his picture on page 25, second, first down. So he will be joined by Dr. Cele Celestina Alote. Vice President and Head of Sustainable Development, Goldfields, West Africa. Mr. Laurent Payat, Managing Director, Viola, Ghana. And, and Mr. Isaac Wimbele. representing the CEO of Minerals Commission. I hope I got your name right. Right, thank you. In this session, the professor will lead the panel and all of us to understand mining tailings, storage technology, standard regulations and tailings management, preparedness, in event of tailings failure, well, when we hear failure, we know other things too can fail. And then cost, impact, and public dialogue to impact public accountability. So in 30 minutes, Professor, we are in your hands. I shall be prompting you. So thank you very much, Honorable. Nana Chairman, Nana Tetrete. Those who understand you know that Tetrete is very huge and wide. But he's humble enough to fit into a chair. Thank you very much. Um, 
based on the protocols of the please permit me to ride on the back of it and as move on as I lead the session. We have four bright stars in the galaxy of the tailings environment to educate us about what happens in their space. And as we all know, we talk about the grade of gold. Two grams per ton. One gram per ton. It means that if you mine a ton, you take only just about one gram out of it. Where do you keep the rest? And how do you make sure that you protect it in such a way that it does not create harm to the environment around us? This is what we are going to talk about. So each of the four big people here will do presentation, and after that, there will be some questions. Please permit me to start with the CEO of EPA regarding the standards they have set for this environment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Madrita. The protocol is well established. So I'll stand by that. Um, from Environmental Protection Agency, with great felicitations to the organizers of this program and to the dignitaries. Um, our presentations, um, for lack of time, you won't be so much, but we do introduction and then try to see what is mine tailings. Uh, quickly, mine tailings disposal, uh, what is tailings storage facility, conventional tailings disposition types, tailings storage facility design considerations, tailings de deposition methods, instrumentation, management of excess supernatant water, historical perspective of tailings storage facilities in Ghana. Current practices. Then we look at environmental considerations and we conclude. So Mr. Moderator, be assured that um, EPA will be within time. Mr. Moderator, um, Nana Chair, uh, I must confess that uh, you're trying to be preaching to the already converted. Because captains of industries here do really know, and they know far better than we do uh, as regulators. But for those who are uninitiated, um, few of our colleagues who uh, do not actually have insight, that much insight in the subject. Uh, globally, the storage and handling of mine tailings is a major environmental challenge, and that is an obvious thing to look at. Majority of mine tailings are toxic and must be kept perpetually isolated from the biophysical environment. And this one, I think everybody agrees with, uh, particularly when you have um, uh, heavy metals like mercury, uh, others, uh, sodium cyanide, and all others in place. The volume of tailings production is immense since metal extraction is usually only ounces or pounds for every ton of ore. Mine tailings are usually a very fine mud or powder, which is left over after ore is crushed and valuable minerals are extracted from it. So mine tailings may also contain chemicals that are used in mineral extractions. That's why I mentioned mercury and other uh, chemicals. Mine tailings are distinct from waste rock, which is the non all rock which miners move and discard as they dig down to assess the underlying ore. They are also distinct from soil and organic, organic matter, collectively known as overbedding, which is removed from the surface above the ore deposit. Mine tailings 
Dispose, uh, disposal of mine tailings is usually the single biggest environmental concern faced by most mining companies and creates very long-term environmental liabilities, which um, we do agree future generations may, uh, generations may have to um, grapple with or try to manage. And this um, environmental protection agency and the companies, the mining companies, uh, have always had some form of uh, confrontation on this. Many mine tailings do, do not become appreciably safer over time, if not stored properly, and therefore must be stored for an indefinite period using current technology. The historically used alternative to storage was to dispose of tailings in the most convenient way possible, such as river dumping. And this Ancobra River has suffered a lot and it has led to widespread environmental contamination in mining areas. This was nominally viable in earlier areas, but human production of mine tailings has increased by several orders of magnitude in the modern age, making such methods unacceptable to many societies, including Ghana. Tailing storage facilities is an engineered structures that compromise the confining embankments, commonly referred to as tailings dams, and associated infrastructure, and are designed to contain tailings and to manage associated water. TSF contains waste material from all processing in liquid or slurry form and must be responsibly managed to prevent impacts on human life and safety, the environment, and other infrastructure. Conventional tailings, the, the position types, we have so many, uh, in-pit tailings, um, co-disposal tailings, on-land tailings disposition, also known as valley impoundments, um, and all others. Now, the tailing storage facilities, how it's being designed and what are taken into consideration. He's saying that basin preparation, compacted clay liner. A compacted clay liner is a seepage-free barrier constructed of a cohesive soil that is compacted to increase its bulk dry density and homogeneity. The purpose is to reduce porosity and decrease soil permeability. Then we have the high-density polyethane geomembrane liner. This one is the preferred product for lining projects. HDPE liner is resistant to many different solvents and are the most widely used geomembrane liner in the world. Although HDPE geomembrane provides higher specific strength and can withstand higher temperatures, its exceptional chemical and ultraviolet resistance properties make it an extremely cost-effective product. The, the agency have, over the years, realized that the use of the compacted clay liner alone does not provide the required permeability, and as such have instituted the use of HDPE geomembrane liner in addition to the compacted clay liner. Um, embankment construction. We have the upstream, we have the downstream, and we have the center line. And we had uh, my big brother, from um, Goldfields uh, talking about the downstream, which is the accepted norm, and Ghana is already in there. Uh, that is a good thing for us. Um, I will skip the, the, the positions. Um, the, there are a lot of methods, and like I said earlier on, you do know. Let me get to the instrumentations. We have groundwater monitoring boreholes. As groundwater monitoring boreholes are designed to determine any potential groundwater contamination, and this is very, very key and very important, because if we do not take care, we will end up contaminating the, the, the groundwater, which is uh, there is a, a reservoir, a huge reservoir for water resources. Then the piezometers, that are the standpipe and vibrating wire. These are designed to measure fluid pressures such as pore water pressure, joint water pressure, well pressure, and pump line pressure. Then we have also the pins, 
of their presence, that is settlement systems. Settlement systems are designed to follow the vertical movement of points of interest, depending on your project's specific requirements, various technologies from manually surveyed settlement place to high precision settlement monitoring systems, and they are available. Then the inclinometers. Inclinometer probes are a manually operated instrument that uses repeated measurements along the axis of the inclinometer casing to calculate the formations normal to the axis. This is very important. How do we manage the excess supernatant water? Uh, the tailing storage facilities are designed as zero discharge facilities. That's the, that's the, um, the ideal thing but that is not just on the ground. However, in the event of excess supernatant water accumulation, there is the need to treat safe to comply with the provisions of Ghana standards for environment and health prote protection. Requirements for effluent discharge, um, the citation is there. Proud to discharge into the external environment. You can also use the reverse osmosis treatment technology where water treatment technology that removes contaminants from water by using pressure to force water molecules through a semi-permeable membrane. During this process, the contaminants are filtered and flushed out, resulting in clean water and the generation of brine. And this is water recycling, a very efficient way of doing it. Then the adsorption treatment technology. This one, Treatment technology is from used as tertiary purification for the removal of organic micropollutants and COD and metals in organic complexes, that's brine, to a lesser extent from wastewater. The absorption factor is determined uh, various uh, grounds. Okay, on the next slide, there are some specific, um, historical perspective of tailing storage facility. This was before, Done, and this is what we have now. Uh, I'm unable to mention the particular company, but this is um, what we see here, what we are doing as uh, tailings um, storage facility previously. But today we have here, please uh, go ahead, go on. Uh, the current practices we see there, um, we're doing a lot of uh, good things, the industry, I think you'll be clapping for yourself, yourselves, uh, the industry, yes. Uh, environmental conservation, since we are coming from that perspective. The following environmental considerations are adopted for sustainable construction and operation of tailing storage facilities. We're saying that downstream embankment design construction due to its robustness. So say you are perfectly right in your admonition. Then HDP uh, geomembrane lining, I've already enumerated. We say monitoring instrumentation must always be there for early detection, rehabilitation of decommissioned TSFs, and we, we just saw some uh, just recently. Uh, then, by way of conclusion, uh, we're saying that for long-term stability and sustainability of tailing storage facilities in the mining industry, there is a need to, one, adopt appropriate designs, two, select appropriate technology, three, adopt relevant monitoring mechanisms, and implement suitable closure methods. Above all, be, be compliance to EPA, Environmental Protection Agency regulations. Uh, for lack of time, I would have given you uh, EPA in focus, but uh, Prof, you've allowed me one minute. Uh, my sector minister is here, Honorable Dr. Kokwefi, representing the president. Uh, he has um, embarked on a, a complete reformation and restructuring, refocusing of Environmental Protection Agency, starting with the uh, amendment of the law. Soon, you will be called Environmental Protection Authority with much, much more muscle to deal with environmental matters in this country. And when that happens, uh, you are sure uh, to have a very friendly but firm Fair and Fair Environmental Protection Agency. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Honorable CEO. I think he deserves another round of applause.
for a politician and lawyer talking like an engineer. I think um, that's wonderful. Um, please keep your questions. You'll get the opportunity to ask them very soon. But let us move on to um, the Minerals Commission to tell us about the standard regulations in tailings management. Nanache, please permit me to wear the shoes of my chief executive. You know that they are big shoes, but I'll try to wear them properly and to walk in your presence. Uh, all protocol observed, as my senior uh, regulator has started. I am here to make a small presentation on Tailings management, as far as the Minerals Commission perspective is concerned, uh, the, is there? the presentation is a short one and is based on the Minerals and Mining Act and the subsequent regulations thereof. Is there? Okay, yes. So uh, the presentation basically looks at the standard regulations and tailings management in Ghana. And sorry, I have a small introduction. The presentation will be, will have an introduction. It will look at the legal framework which governs the management of tailings in Ghana. We'll look at generally at uh, tailing storage facilities We'll look at the design and construction of tailing storage facilities. Then we'll look at the closure of such facilities. The Minerals Commission, as a government institution responsible for mining, was established in 1993 by Act 450 and focuses on the development and coordination of minerals sector policy and monitoring its implementation. The Commission's primary responsibility is to foster the efficient and uh, effective regulation and management of the utilization of Ghana's minerals resources. We have a legal framework, but amongst the, we have the Minerals and Mining Act 703 and the subsequent regulations, but for this presentation, the, I'm going to concentrate on the minerals and mining into brackets, health, safety, and technical regulations, 2012. That is LI2182, which is what governs uh, the management of tailing storage facilities. We have other international standards, but uh, I'm not going to talk about that. This is a typical uh, <clears throat> picture of a tailing storage facility on one of our uh, mine sites. And you would ask, what is this facility? This is basically an engineered facility which is meant to receive the residual uh, products that comes from the extraction of ore, uh, of the gold or whatever mineral of interest from the ore that is mined. And the, we, the regulations in Ghana have classified all tailing storage facilities into three hazard classes. Ghana, being a human-centered country, has classified them based on the number of persons who can be affected should you have a failure of the facility. And uh, we say that the TSF is in hazard class C. If, sh should the facility fail, nobody would be impacted. That means downstream the facility, there are no dwellings, and for that matter, uh, there will be no impact on it. But in terms of the environmental damage, we usually say it is moderate. When you are in tailings class B, we say that when there's a failure, it means that between one to 20 persons would have been impacted. And we say that in terms of damage, it is serious. But when you have between 21 to 20, uh, 50 persons who will be impacted, should a facility fail, 
they will say that you are in hazard class A. When there are more than 50 persons, it means that that facility cannot be allowed to be constructed. So uh, you either have to think about resettling the communities downstream so that you either fall between any of these uh, hazard classes that we have. The start of these facilities will always start with a design which says that if the manager of the mine shall ensure that the design, construction, and monitoring is uh, carried out by a qualified engineer which should be achieved by, uh, approved by the chief inspector of mines. And you may want to find out who are these qualified engineers. The chief inspector of mines has already approved some engineers whose background is either a geotechnical engineer, a civil engineer, or a geologist with a rock mechanic background. Those are the categories of persons who usually will do these uh, designs. And <clears throat> the design must be submitted and approved by the commission. And in that design, you see that there are various things that should be included in that design. You have an engineering design report, which should be included, detail one. You also have the operating plan. You have a monitoring plan and the other things that are supposed to be included in that design. After the design is submitted and approved, the next stage is the construction of the facility. And the construction involves the construction of the impoundment which is the basement of the facility. And with the impoundment, it is said that the impoundment must be cleared of all vegetation and topsoil, as well as any unsuitable material that will be found in the basin. And also, it should have an under drainage to make sure that all uh, and water is properly connected and channeled into a sump, which can then be uh, pumped back into the facility. And the law says that it should have a clear liner uh, about 30 centimeters thick, which should be uh, compacted to a permeability of about 10 to the power minus 6 centimeters per second. The embankment walls. <laughs> After the construction of the impoundment, you would need to constru uh, construct the embankment, which is what is to restrain the tailings from flowing out of the uh, facility. And there are various requirements, says that you should clear the area of all vegetations and all kinds of things. Then we have management of the facility. After you've constructed a facility, you would need to manage it so that the impact on the environment and the surrounding communities is minimized. We have various things. You have to look at your pipelines, the integrity of the pipelines, and the way the uh, tailings are uh, deposited into the facility. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Kokofu talked about the monitoring boreholes and the seepage collection sumps. And in addition, there should be a spillway. Should you have excess water, it should be able to spill gently into the environment without being uh, eroding the uh, embankment walls. Then it talks about the closure of the facility. After you've operated the facility and it's full, it must be closed. The requirement is that uh, the mine must submit a mine closure plan, which should be approved and the, the closure plan, the key uh, objective of the closure plan is to make sure that you take steps to prevent metallic water from infiltrating through the tailings uh, material. This is to prevent any uh, acid mine drainage issues that may occur. It's also to ensure that the facility is stable because once you close, you are not there again. If it's not stable and it fails, you may have problems and that it should meet Influence from the facility should meet uh, the EPA discharge guidelines. Thank you.